Hey everybody, welcome to another Good E-Reader review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the HTC One. This is the latest generation smartphone that the company has produced. It just came out roughly in the last few weeks. And we'd like to thank our friends at Wireless Wave on West 4th Avenue in Kitsilano, Vancouver for the loaner unit. Today we're going to check out the hardware in terms of what type of specs does this bring to the table and we'll also look at some of the daily things that you'll use this phone for such as ebooks comics newspapers making a call video audio so on so let's get a sense of the specs before we really dive into things here it's a 4.7 inch screen and the resolution is 1920 by 1080 so you get tremendous resolution for videos pictures and all that jazz it has a snapdragon quad core 1.7 gigahertz processor it has a dedicated gpu it also has two gigs of ram it has two different storage options either 32 or 64 gigs so choose it wisely because it does not have expandable storage via a micro sd so You'll have to take advantage of Dropbox, Box, and all those cloud storage services. Peter, give us a sense on what this brings to the table. I like the look of the phone because it doesn't look like any other phone. You have the Gorilla Glass in the middle and the all-metal aluminum-esque look to it around the sides and onto the back. Um, dual front-facing stereo speakers, so you're getting tremendous sound quality and volume coming right at you. With, along with the video, so I think the way it should be that, than it is to have them on the back or the bottom or the side. 2.1 megapixel front facing camera, light sensors, uh, bezel buttons here, they're not physical, they are still software driven, so the phone has to be on for them to do anything. Looking onto the back, it's all metal on the back as well, the entire phone is. You have a microphone up top for when you're filming with a 4 megapixel rear facing camera, light slash flash, uh, Beats Audio logo at the bottom, embossed HTC logo, there's the SIM card on the side, you need the little extractor tool that comes with the phone, and you have the talking microphone along with the micro uh, USB cable, volume control on the side, up and down, a little bit of style to it as well because it's almost like a pinched metal design here, and 3.5mm headphone jack and standby button on the top. I really dig this hardware. I think that this phone brings something to the table that's quite different. If you say look at uh, the BlackBerry Z10, very boring. If you look at the Samsung Galaxy S4, little to no personality, rounded edges. But I mean this oozes in personality. This, this stands out in a smartphone crowd that's very generic. So that's the one thing I really dig about it. Plus I'm just a fan of silver and gunmetal in general. So next we're going to look at the software experience. Front and center on your main home screen is what's known as a blink feed. It's a very flipboard-esque experience. You can tailor specific websites. So we have Joystick, TechCrunch, and a few other companies located here. You can click on any particular article and give yourself a chance to actually read it, share it via social media, and so on. Pretty cool, and it's bundled right in the phone. So you do have to configure what websites you want to do here, but you can click on here and actually get a sense of, you know, videos and things like that too. Okay. So standard at Android, you have like your phone here, so you could call numbers, people's names, pictures, and everything like that appears here. So of course you'll be doing that on a daily basis. Keyboard? Keyboard's pretty nice. I mean, we're both fans of a keyboard that has a dedicated row for numbers, so you don't have to go into extended menus and press shift and alternate and all that kind of thing yeah, to reach my, them. That's my bane. I really dig keyboards right. that have that number field there because, I mean, any password that you're going to type in nowadays is going to have a combination of numbers and letters. And so this makes it just easier to do your day-to-day -day activities. Exactly. So we're going to just hit the home button here. And as you can see here, messages, your web browser. So this is web browsing experience pinch and zooming fairly fast. You can, of course, double tap to conform everything to the screen. 
So this is like a sense on how things load. We are on Bell LTE in Canada, so we can just click on like an article and just see how fast it like loads up. Pretty fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm happy with that. So the web browsing experience on HTC One is fairly fast and robust. You also have your camera. Take advantage of front or rear facing, but we won't do that for the purposes of of today. Of course, you have your weather widget, but you can install any widgets that you want. It has full unfeathered access to uh, Google Play. So if you want to, you know, basically download anything you want, it's fully Google Play compatible. Of course, you can install alternative apps if you wanted to, such as the Goody Reader App Store. Oh uh, yeah. So these are mainly the apps that got bundled with it. You know, standard things, TV, but if you click here, a little bit of the custom folders that they did. So you have TuneIn, a lot of the Play stuff, SoundHound, a lot of the Google services. I kind of like dig the little folders because you can call them up and then click anywhere and actually close them. We'll show you kind of what the settings menu looks like here. Kind of the HTC Sense that they have going on here. Near field communication, so you can pay for things wirelessly. Take advantage of all the NFC services that are starting to crop up all over the world. You can one click software updates. A lot of your network information and so on. So out of the box, and after running all the updates, this is the Android version that we have. HTC did say that they are going to push out uh, 4.2 uh, later on and getting up to like 4.2.3. We'll see how that goes. Almost all providers say that <laughs> it yeah. is upgrade. You know, say that to get you in, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're Goody Reader. The emphasis on phones for us is to provide a vehicle for reading. So we're going to click on Kindle. We have a book open here. As you can see, you could increase the size of the font. It happens in real time. Standard kind of Amazon text augmentation because this is the Kindle app so it's pretty much going to be the same cross-platform. Right, so we've just put on sepia or sepia depending on how you want to say it. So you can scroll pages all pretty fast. Highlights, text. You can search in a book with Wikipedia. So if you want to click a specific word You can also take notes and save them as part of your book. One of the cool kind of things is Amazon actually revised their Android app. So you have a cool sort of sub-menu here that didn't exist before. Sam popular samples, newsstand, docs, books on a device. Even like tap things into like your settings. So I kind of dig the new uh, look of Amazon here. So that's the e-reading experience. Well, how does this come out for newspapers? Well, we have a newspaper here. So this is a replica newspaper from Press Reader. So you can see the text very small. You know, you would have to pinch and zoom a lot to get this happening the way that you want. It's unreadable by default. <laughs> right. But you, anything that's highlighted, you can click onto it, and as you can see, suddenly it's a lot readable now. And you have the ability to change the text and make it as big as you want. Yep. Or if you still find yourself having difficulty, you can have the article get read aloud to you. Of course, you can share everything here. Facebook, Evernote, Instapaper, so on. So most of like these apps, especially when they're designed for smartphones, have a lot of font options. And that's super important given that like when we were looking at here, 
I mean, <laughs> although it's crisp and the resolution is really showing itself, you just you really just can't read it. Yeah. So I mean, you can read it if you pinch and Oh, totally, yeah. And things like that, but you probably want to go to the article view. Right. As your most important thing. So we've looked at ebooks, newspapers, well, hey, comic books are the other medium because they're very graphic heavy. So we'll look at the first issue of The Age of Ultron. I was kind of underwhelmed by this series, actually, but whatever. Okay, so comic book experience, you have sort of the guided view here from Marvel. Isolate specific panels. Or you can double tap to get out. Let's get to something that has a little bit more color other than blue. There you go. That's looking really crisp. Let's zoom in on these uh, BAMs down here. Very crisp, very clean. So you might want to look at it in a landscape mode too. It all depends on how you want to do it. Like some, this panel obviously looks better in right. landscape mode. I mean, most of media today is landscape oriented. So, but then obviously, yeah. <laughs> comics are still one of those things that are always better in portrait. <laughs> yeah, but if you do go to guided view, there is like, you do get a little bit of. I think it looks better in, in landscape mode when you're using guided, guided view, view yes, rather it does. than it's standing in portrait mode because you kind of looked at the juxtaposition of how we originally started us off and transitioning into here. I think it looks a lot better. Yeah, so. There's only so much you can do like on 4.7 to 5 inch screens. Right. They're, they're not tablets, you know. But well, they're almost big enough to be called tablets nowadays. I guess, <laughs> especially with the whole phablet thing. Oh that's man, going on. the Note 2 and the Note 3. Yeah. So this is a sense of what comics brings to the table, as you can see by default. It's, it's hard to read as is. You do have to take advantage of guided view right. or consistently pinch and zoom or keep on switching between landscape and portrait. It, it really depends because some comics, they're more designed like this. Right. Large frames, text easily readable. You flip the page, you know, you can see this here. But you can't read what's up top. Exactly. You have to pinch and zoom, pinch and zoom out. So, of course, there are settings to kind of change things here, but they don't really do a whole lot. So, this may not be the optimal phone for comic reading, but know that there, it's possible to read them and to change it enough to actually get something out of it. Uh, well, you know, video is an audio. Let's take a look at how the front-facing speakers actually perform under real-world conditions. It's been 10 years. You start to forget. things you should remember and you can't stop remembering the things you should forget we've always had the power not anymore all we have is each other Fighting for something that can't be killed. Soldiers stand against their enemies. But ghosts haunt them.
So in the studio environment, that trailer looked amazing. Filming a screen of a screen may not do it total justice, but the sound quality was unreal. That is probably the best sound quality I've heard on a cell phone. That yeah. is amazing. It was crisp, it was clear, it was as much of a surround sound feel on a tiny device as you could get. That was that was phenomenal. Yeah, for for what the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 7 did for tablets with its Dolby surround sound, this is about as close as you'll get on a phone. And we didn't even have the volume turned up the full way. Right. And it was very evident in our studio room here that it was filling up the entire room with sound. It's certainly a, a strong departure from single mono speakers of phones, not too right, long like long the one speaker on the back kind of thing in the bottom right corner. I mean, even the S4 has one speak, uh, the speaker situated on the rear battery panel. So this is a great uh, breath of fresh air in terms of sound quality. Yeah, I'm in the end. Uh, I would recommend this phone if you're looking for a high and Android phone. It is a very unique design, so it'll stand out in a crowd of very black phones. I do like the gunmetal. I think what's won me over is the front-facing speakers. The camera is, is probably the weakest part. I mean, the front-facing 2.1 is, is fairly standard. Most phones have 2.1 or 2 megapixel front-facing speakers, but a rear camera that only does 4 megapixels, fairly weak. Um, and a lot of people are using their phones to take pictures of bands, right. friends, food. That Even videos too, so. Exactly, so if taking pictures is important for you, you may want to look at other phones on the market, such as the Samsung S4. It does have a 13 megapixel rear facing camera, so it's a huge jump. Blink feeds is cool. Uh, the HTC Sense overlay actually makes things a little bit more user friendly, but of course you can install you know, third party things uh, if you want to. Uh, in the end, I really dig this phone. Right, I mean, uh, I pretty much agree with all that's been said throughout the time we've been speaking in this video. Um, the thing, yeah, that obviously jumps out to me the most and most people out there is the front facing speakers, especially the all metal design. I, I love an all metal phone. I mean, all metal devices, really. I mean, they don't scratch as easy. They feel good in your hand. They feel like it's made from good quality. I mean, uh, look at this Samsung Galaxy S4. Although it's very current 2013 uh, up to date the the plastics are fairly cheap the battery cover is a millimeter thin um, I mean very fragile parts whereas this one looks like it is built as just about as strong as you could build a, a smartphone with glass and metal so uh, overall I think it's a fantastic phone I really wish they had an SD card slot I wish maybe they had a 16 gigabyte version and cut the price and I kinda wish that they had a bigger camera uh, a, a higher megapixel camera at the back but it's little things alright guys so tell us what you think about this you've heard our thoughts let's hear yours comment on this video and we'll endeavor to reply to each and every reply and thanks again to wireless wave in Kitslano, West 4th Avenue in Vancouver, BC for providing this unit to us for a review of the HTC One for GoodyReader.com. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.